Magandang araw, BBTC Filipino. God is good all the time. Amen. All Amen. The time. God is good. Amen. This is our first time po to go online, our church service online, Filipino service. Hindi man pa tayo sama-sama sa isang bubong, but we are together online, united in our hearts. Amen. Amen. At Pupurihin po natin ang Diyos sa oras na to. Amen. Hallelujah. So bago po tayo ang ah, mag-offer ng mga masasayang awit sa Panginoon, tayo po muna yung manalangin. Panginoon, marami pong salamat sa, uh, sa umaga pong ito. Thank you for bringing us together even online, Lord. Truly, there is none like you, Jesus. You are our one true God, the Almighty God. Father, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, forgive our sins. And as we worship you, Lord, we pray, Lord, come, come and fill us, Lord. Let your presence be with us, O God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, let your presence also be upon those uh, people, our brothers and sisters who are in their homes. Thank you, Jesus. This we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Sabi pong ganon sa Deuteronomy 31.6, gusto ko lamang pong basahin. Be strong. Sabi po, of good courage, do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. Kahit na kailan, di tayo mag-iisa, sapagat yan po ang pangako ng Diyos. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all clap our hands. Tayo po yung magsaya. Magbukusang magpuri sa Diyo.
niya ay kalakasan Sa bawat pusong napapagkat Kaya't ang awit ng papuli Awit ng pasasalamat At ang awit ng pagsamba Para lang sa kanya papuri at pagsamba, Panginoon. Thank you, Jesus. Salamat po, Panginoon. Yes, Lord. We just want your presence, oh God. And we just want to offer ourselves to you. Sa iyo po ang aming buhay, Panginoon. aming mga puso ay sa iyo, Diyos. Inaanyanyahan ka namin, O Diyos. Pumasok ko nga po sa amin, sa aming mga puso, sa aming mga buhay, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for that thing. Endless birth, the 
how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you Oh 
God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God how great is our God so great is his love for us it is so great that you even while we were still sinners demonstrated that love that great love for us by sending your son to die on the cross for our sins and now Lord even as we celebrate the Lord's Supper on the night that he was betrayed Jesus Christ after washing the disciples feet and saying love each other as I have loved you he broke the bread and he gave it to his, his disciples and said take this this is my body which has been broken for you. Partake it in remembrance of me. After partaking of the bread together, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the covenant of my blood, the new covenant for the forgiveness of your sins. Let's drink of this together. in union with you, Jesus Christ. As a community of faith, we have partaken of your body and of your blood, and that we can say along with the Apostle Paul, we have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer we who live, but you, Jesus, through your Holy Spirit, lives in us and upon this hope and upon this life that you have given to us we live by faith in the son of god who loved us and gave himself for us in jesus name we pray amen now we offer our tithes and offerings and the instructions are clearly uh, there before us so we uh, invite you to either do it by bank transfer or check and so let me just pray for our offering to the lord jesus christ oh father we are so thankful our lives are yours oh god you have given us life not only life on this temporal world but life eternal in eternity and for that inheritance that you have given to us is just priceless oh god we now offer ourselves to you everything that we have is yours everything that you have given us is yours for your glory 
use it for your kingdom and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Warm greetings from the BBTC Filipino congregation. We welcome you to this message time from the Word of God and to let us know that even in these times when it seems so challenging, when you look at the Facebook, you see all kinds of pain, tears, sorrow, a lot of depression, a lot of uh, wondering what's happening. But you know, to us who are born again, we have the Word of God that is eternal, and the plan of God, which is clearly de uh, displayed in the Word of God, that gives us hope, even in the midst of challenging times. And one of the authors that we are referring to is First Peter. Uh, Peter was the head of the church, as you know, and uh, he was a transformed man as he followed Jesus Christ as he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And even as we see in the book of Acts, he was the key man in bringing the gospel to the Jews in Acts chapter 2. He was the key man in bringing the gospel and the Holy Spirit to the Samaritans in Acts chapter 4. And he was the key man and the preacher in bringing the gospel to a Roman centurion in Acts chapter 10. And I'm pretty sure that even in that time, there was already a lot of persecution going on. There was a lot of, a, there was a scattering of the church in Acts chapter 8, when Stephen, the first uh, martyr for the gospel, was killed. And as a result of that, there was a scattering of the Jews and the church, and they went all over. And in a way, it was the fulfillment of what Jesus said, that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be empowered, and you will bring the gospel from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we see that even through challenging times, the kingdom of God continues to grow, continues to expand. And so here... Peter is addressing the churches mostly in the area of Turkey. And he uh, actually was uh, probably able to go through that because according to historical accounts, Peter actually was writing this from Rome. And he had traveled all the way. And I would imagine that maybe the Roman centurion may have introduced him to some of his friends and also some of the Christians were enslaved and brought to Rome and also the fact that they needed encouragement. Along the way, he passed by Turkey, I'm sure, and uh, you can see that from his opening lines, he's referring to the scattered elect, a scattered church, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, God's elect, do you know that you are selected by God? You are a chosen generation. If you have received Jesus Christ into your life, you are part of a kingdom that is eternal and that God has chosen you. And according to Peter, even if you are an exile scattered throughout regions, various parts of the world, you have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Even before the creation of the world, even before the beginning of time, God already had you in mind. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, God knows you even before you were born, even before the creation. And so God in his foreknowledge, in his omniscience, in his knowledge of what's going to happen from beginning to end, already had people in mind like you and me who have received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And so therefore, we are elected. We are chosen for a purpose, for a purpose. And that 
God, the Trinity, the Godhead, is actually working together, informing and shaping our lives. According to Peter, he says, the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. The sanctification of the Holy Spirit is enabling us and forming and shaping us and refining us to become holy, to become like Christ, so that we can actually display the splendor and the glory of the kingdom of God here in this dark, dying, decaying earth. There are people who still need to know that there is hope, and we can be not only the spokesperson of God, but also the image of God as we were created to be. The image that displays, that represents God in this world. And lastly, Peter says, we are chosen and enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit to obey our King, Jesus Christ. To be in obedience to Jesus Christ, especially during this time. In the Gospels, Jesus gave about 49 commandments for us to be able to follow, for us to be able to obey. And like Joshua in the Old Testament, we are called to meditate on his word, his commands day and night, so that we are able to do all that is written, all that has been commanded to us, because all these are there for us so that we can follow him and become like him in this world and point people to Jesus Christ, the King. So, in verse 3, Peter says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. There is a prophetic intent to Peter when he writes this letter because this is the word of God. It's eternal. And there's a time for this word to be revealed at the appropriate time when the context is very similar, but all points to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. The signs are there in Matthew, famines, pestilence, even wars are there for us to be able to see that these are like the birth pains of an earth that is groaning in an anticipation of the new creation. The old creation is going to be passed away. The new creation is coming. Jesus Christ is going to bring it with him. But until that time when Jesus comes back, according to Peter, our hope is on what is there lying before us. We live in the light of eternity. We live in the light of the fact that there is an inheritance that is coming to us, that is ours kept for us in heaven, because as we are Jesus' followers on earth, our names have already been written in the book of life, and in the book of life is the account of all the works that we did, even while on earth, and we will be rewarded according to good works that we have done, even while here on earth. And so, also, that this inheritance is kept in heaven, and through faith, we are shielded by God's power. Through faith, we are shielded by God's power. Because until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Remember in the last, uh, in verse 3, it said that we have been sprinkled by the blood of Christ. And because of our faith, we are shielded. We are shielded. There's a hedge of protection around us while God has something for us to do. While God has a command that we need to obey. 
at this time. And because of that faith, there is an assurance that there is a powerful hedge of protection around his people, even especially in times where there is a lot of death, there's a lot of decay, there's a lot of sickness, there's a lot of pain and sorrow. All of this is there, but we move forward in faith under the protection of God. And therefore, Jesus, even Jesus, according to Hebrews, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This joy is also for us, because even as Jesus endured the suffering, we too, in Jesus Christ, will endure the suffering. And Peter, as the leader of the church, wants to remind us of this from the very beginning, because we need the assurance that God cares for us, that God has something for us to do, and while he has something for us to do, there is a hedge of protection. We are shielded by our faith, which is, according to the Bible, being perfected by Jesus Christ. So we may have even to suffer grief along with others. The Bible says we need to grieve with those who grieve, to cry, to weep with those who weep, to empathize with them. But at the same time, we have the hope that gives us joy. And this joy gives us the power. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we are able to go and do what God wants us to do, acts of kindness, acts of goodness, in His power and according to this joy that is within us. And this joy, we pray that those who receive the blessing that we are going to do in this time will also receive it because they will receive the hope. They will ask the questions, why are you doing what you are doing? And according to Peter, we can give them the answer for the hope that is within us. And therefore, even as we know that there's all this, we also continue to look at the inheritance, to look at the reward, because genuine faith gets its reward. The other part of that statement is to show us, to tell us, and even to young believers, do not be surprised that your faith will be tested. This is a testing of our faith. This is a time when our faith will be tested and needs to be tested so that it can be proven genuine. That's the way it goes in the kingdom of God ever since from the very beginning. I've known, I've been to other lands like Nepal and, and India and China and Vietnam. The saints that tell their stories of the many times they were imprisoned the many times that they were persecuted. And you know what? The test, according to them, of who is a real Christian is the one who is able to endure persecution. Even if they try to force you to renounce your faith, you keep the faith. You keep the faith. And this proves the real, genuine testing of your faith. So this may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. All this is for the fact that we all need, by our lives, by our words, by our actions, to bring praise and honor and glory to Jesus Christ when he finally comes back. So therefore... According to Peter, we need to have a mindset. It all begins with our minds. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians that we should keep our minds captive in obedience to Jesus Christ. Keep your minds captive 
in obedience to Jesus Christ. Our minds should be set on what God wants us to do. Our minds must be set on God. Our minds must be set on heaven. Our minds must be set on eternity even while we are here on earth. And according to Peter, be alert and fully sober because the enemy is still here in this world. He's trying to scare you. He's trying to intimidate you. He's like a roaring lion going around, prowling around, looking for those that he can destroy or kill or steal from. But we need to be alert. We need to be alert and fully sober to set on the hope, on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. So we need to be obedient children. Peter continuously emphasizes this in his letter, that even in this time, when the Satan or the enemy tries to distract you, tries to intimidate you, tries to make you cower in fear, he is actually trying to sway us, dis distract us from what God wants you to do. And therefore, we need to be fully convicted in our minds. We need to have our mindset on Jesus. Remember, he gave us his commands in the Great Commission. He said, obey my commands, all my commands, and teach them to your disciples so that they too may obey all the commands that I have given to you. Let us read again all the commands of Jesus Christ in the Gospels. It starts with repentance all the way to feeding my sheep. And all of this is there. Loving God, loving your neighbor. Be baptized. Make disciples of all nations. We are an intentional disciple-making church in BBTC. We need to keep this right in front of us and keep on the task. Keep on the task. Keep on the line, because this line is the line where we find the greatest reward. So be holy, because I am holy, God says. According to Peter, we need to be holy. We need to be fully consecrated. We need to be fully purified so that we bring the full light we bring the full gospel. We bring the full kingdom of God to, to this earth. No more of the old, old uh, Peter, the proud, impetuous Peter. Now the new Peter has come, humble, but the servant shepherd of the sheep in, in that time of history. So according to Peter, the complement of holiness and according to God's character is love. The two greatest attributes of God is holiness and love. It is pure. It is powerful. It is transcendent. It is omnipotent. It is omniscient. It is omnipresent. Yet at the same time, it reaches out and it sacrifices self. It sacrifices self for the sake of others. It sacrifices self so that we can actually go to others and tell them the good news of Jesus Christ, that there is hope. There is hope, and we can have all kinds of actions that would complement the preaching of the gospel so that they may know and experience the love of God. So according to Peter, your life must be one of holiness and also one of deep love. All this is shaping us and forming us as a church of God. Remember in Matthew 16, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say I am? It was Peter who said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And according to God, uh, Pete, Jesus, he said, 
upon this rock I will build my church. Now he was probably also referring to himself as the cornerstone, the cornerstone of the church. He was like the stone that would set the dimensions and the directions of the church. And according to this line, Jesus said uh, through Peter, you come to the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Chosen to be living stones forming the spiritual house of God upon this earth. That as living stones, we are put together, put together. We all fit together. We have various gifts. We have various fruits. All, all of the Holy Spirit and his old molding and shaping us so that we all fit together in the same church. That we can complement each other with the various gifts that we have of serving, of preaching, of teaching, of prophesying. All these are there for the church to be a manifestation of the goodness of God, the actions of God, the acts of God upon this earth. And this also is a house of prayer. It is a holy priesthood. It is offers sacrifices on behalf of the people so that they may actually come to Jesus Christ, that they may know it is God. They need to turn their attention to God, to ask for forgiveness of their sins. And we are a holy priesthood, chosen, chosen, elected by God for this purpose, that we are a holy priesthood. We offer sacrifices that are acceptable to God. According to Romans chapter 12, we also offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship. So therefore, we are being formed according to what Jesus prophesied. He said, I will build my church. Even with the coronavirus, I will continue to build my church. Even if you are scattered to your various homes, even if you are uh, not able to meet in one place, you will continue to be the living stones that I have chosen to be a holy priesthood. We can actually build the family altars now. We can build the personal altars wherever you are. Altars where we can offer praise and prayer to God so that we can offer spiritual sacrifices ourselves and sacrifices on behalf of others, interceding for them so that they may actually become part of this powerful, expanding kingdom of God that is continuing to grow even despite the coronavirus. So, as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of, his, out of, his dark, out of the darkness into his wonderful light. We are a holy priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We are a people belonging to God that we may bring and we may declare, despite all that's what's happening around us, declare the praises that belong to Jesus in this time that he is actually forming his church, he's expanding his kingdom, and we may actually do this into into the point where actually a lot of people, and I would imagine at this time, a lot of people are coming from the darkness because now they begin to see the light through his saints. Even though his saints are scattered by their lives and by their words, by their actions, they proclaim the praises of what is going to happen. There is hope for all of mankind. There is still hope, and heaven's doors are still open. 
we need to continually declare the praises of him. And I'm glad that even our prayers, our BBTC prayers that we send out regularly, now there's a greater emphasis on praising God because he has a plan. His plan and his will will be done and his kingdom will come. So while we are here in a sinful world, there's still sin and the enemy is still here. There's a lot of lying and deception that he can, fake news that can, he can actually scare people into just cowering in fear and entering into depression and ultimately even some of them are taking their own lives. And so while this is happening, and there's, you can see for, from the fatality rate today, this is actually making the enemy very happy. Yet at the same time, we also have been called by God to let the people know and to demonstrate to the people that there is hope. That they, oh, even, though, even though they may even turn against us, but by our good deeds, by our good works, we can actually make them see that they can glorify God because in God is the only hope for their salvation. And so through our good deeds, Peter continues to emphasize this. Continue to obey God. Continue to seek God. Tell me, Lord, what do you want me to do at this time? What do you want me to do? Seek him. Ask him, Lord, what can I do? Maybe I, my movements are inhibited or anything like this, but God will, according to his verse in Isaiah 43, 4, if you offer your lives to him, he will give you men in exchange for your life. He will give you people in exchange for your life. This may come in the form of divine appointments. It may come in the form of questions. It may come in the form of people asking for help. These are divine opportunities and we can see that God is bringing people to his, to his church. Even though the church may be closed physically, the building may be church, uh, the close may, may be closed, but the lives of the Christians are here. And while we are still alive, we can be an image of God and to be a leader of God that he created us to be. So, even, even in this time, we are challenged because even as it was during the Roman time, there was a government and there were the employers and there were the households where even the husbands may not have been Christians. But in these three contexts, Peter also has specific instructions that even as Jesus said, give unto Caesar what is due to Caesar, we too must do our part in society, must show that we are good citizens of the land that God has put us in. And therefore, this is part of the fact of being a holy priesthood, that we represent God on this land, yet we also show that the kingdom of God is one that is submitted, submitted to the authorities that are in place because according to the Bible, the government has been chosen also and selected by God to be God's servants. And so even if they don't believe in God or not, they are there for a purpose. And this is also for us to recognize that authority is there and we respect and honor authority. And so we do this to the governors, to the emperor, to the kings, whoever is in charge, the prime minister, the ministers of the government, we need to honor and respect them. They too, according to div the God's divine foreknowledge, he has chosen them for this people at this time. The masters are also there, those who are your employers. Sometimes uh, we see articles where there seems to be a tension about the off days and why we should not be given uh, too much restriction at the home, that we should be allowed to get out, 
All this are going to be tensions in the home, but the bottom line is this. According to Peter, it is God's will that we submit, submit to our masters. Even though they may, some of them may be harsh, even though some of them may not seem to be able to understand, but it is again for the common good. And according to Peter, this is good. This is a good work. And we, as Christians, need to take responsibility for this aspect of our society. And finally, to the households, where even the non-Christian husbands may be actually uh, lording it over their wives, the Christian wives. But according to this, our humility, our gentleness, and our quietness in spirit is an inner beauty that actually will be proven attractive to those that are harsh or unjust or treating us wrongly. And according to Peter and according to Jesus, you know, all of this is part of the fact that we take part in the suffering of Christ. He came to a broken world, to an evil world, and he endured even the worst thing that they could do to him, which is dying on the cross, crucifying him on the cross, so that they may ultimately know that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. So in all of this, we take the authority of God's word. We take, we take peace. We take uh, uh, a trust in our hearts and our minds that this is all part of God's plan. He has ordained it. He has allowed it to happen. We go through it to prove not only the genuineness of our faith, but by our good works display the glory of God. So, we have the same attitude as Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, Jesus Christ came into this world. It was a world that proved to be very antagonistic, very threatened by the fear that he would actually take the power, especially of those who were in power, and there would, it would result in the death and the torture and the shame of our Lord. And he suffered this, but for our sake. So we do this in the same way, so that even those who are persecuting us may be able to see that we have a hope and a, and a, a protector that is able, enabling us to be able to do, endure all of this so that they too may acknowledge that there's a higher power, that there is a God, and they may ask you for the reason, why, why? And you can always say, because I follow my risen Lord, and he endured the same thing, and I offer my life to him so that I too can be in fellowship with his suffering so that people are going to be saved. The ultimate goal is salvation. And we pray that during these this challenging times, that we as Christians, we as the followers of Jesus Christ, we as his disciples, will follow him all the way. All the way. Peter was going to be crucified upside down in Rome. It was said that when the Roman Emperor Nero he burned Rome down in A.D. 64, and this is about the time the letter was written. And according to history and tradition, Nero blamed the Christians, even though it was he who orchestrated the burning of Rome. He blamed the Christians, and according to history and according to tradition, Christians were burned at the stake in front of the palace of Nero to show 
that he was the leader and the powerful ruler that he was wanting to be. But they were singing. Some of them, according to tradition, were singing even while they were being burned. So it is not surprising that Peter says this is really part of the time that is near. The time is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Four key words stand out here. In our mission statement, as it were, as a church, number one is pray. Pray. We are a house of prayer. We keep on praying. We pray without ceasing. We pray because we want to show, even to non-Christians, that we are connected to the sovereign God, that we are connected to the vine, and this connection is vital to our lives. It is vital in the fact that it gives us life. It also gives us the power to be able to do what God wants us to do. Prayer is the greatest thing that characterizes the church. According to some scholars, they say, what are the three characteristics of a church? Pray, pray, and pray. So therefore, we must continue to keep praying and then love. Love covers over a multitude of sins. sins. We don't advertise sins. We cover over. We have compassion. We have forgiveness. We forgive those who have sinned against us. And therefore, this gives us the, gives, gives us the, the way by which we can actually tell them that God has forgiven us and that God is a God who forgives people who confess their sins, who repent and turn their lives to him and offer their lives to him. He is a God of justice. He is a faithful God. He will cleanse people from all of their sins and all of their unrighteousness and make them holy before him. We must love, therefore, and we must serve. Serve others with the strength of God, with the power of God, with the direction of God. God has given us gifts, various gifts. And these gifts are meant for us to be able to use so that people will see the power of God in our lives. These are supernatural gifts. Gifts for us to show people that God is living and active. And he works through the bodies, the temples of his saints, so that they may be able to see the living stones in action, the living stones that is forming the church, the living stones that is forming the kingdom of God. And if we speak two things here, we speak with the words of God. You know, it all begins, according to Peter, in the mind. When we have the mind of Christ and our thoughts are captive in obedience to Christ, what comes out would be the word of Christ. Because our thoughts are in obedience to Christ, everything that comes out is the word of Christ. It will come out as the commands of Christ, d demonstrated, displayed, so that people may actually know Christ that they may know Christ through us, through the words that we say, the actions that we do, and our lives, our lives offered to him as living sacrifices. 
So, the last thing, the last thing that Peter in chapter 5 wants to say to us today, and he's speaking now to the leaders, the leaders of cell groups, the leaders of clusters, the leaders of tribes in our church. The last thing that God wants us to know that all of us leaders will receive a crown for our faithful service in the Lord, for the tending of the sheep of the flock, for tending the flock of the, sh the church, the flock, the people that God has given to us to care for, to, to guide along, to feed, to lead, so that they will actually become the living stones, part of the church, and they too may lead others, and this is how the kingdom of God grows. Peter's promise in the, in the Filipino language, crown, is corona. So God is preparing a corona, not a virus, but a crown that is incorruptible for us who serve as leaders in the church, to be the servant shepherds who report and obey to the chief shepherd. And so Peter closes this, closes his letter with this, that there is a reward, there is a genuine inheritance waiting for us to prove that we have a living hope. And so this time is also now a time. And there may be two kinds of people listening to this message. One may be those who still have not received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Who are seekers. Who are wanting to know the answers. The answer in one word is Jesus. And according to his word, all you who receive and believe Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he will enter your life, a life that has a vacuum right now, a vacuum that only he can fill. If you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of Christ, he sends the Holy Spirit to now become his presence and his mover and his leader in your life. The shaper that is forming you and making you the kind of person that he wants you to become. To fulfill the plan that he had for you from the very beginning. So if you are that person and you need to receive and believe, there is a prompting within your heart to now you can actually bow your heads in prayer. Prayer is the first step that you can take to communicating with God from your heart. And I have a sample prayer for us. To those of you who have not yet born, been born again, a simple prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, if this prayer, you feel a prompting in your heart to say this prayer, I will pray this again, but for you who wants to receive Jesus Christ and wants to receive his promise of his Holy Spirit into your life, say this prayer with me, and I will pray it again. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. 
I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now finally, there's another group that at this time you may be overwhelmed with fear. You're overwhelmed with worries. You're, you're feeling helpless. And even in your Christian life, you say you've been struggling. And you need a fresh rejuvenation, a regeneration, so to speak, a rededication. This is also the time that we can do that together in prayer. And this final is prayer is for you who are feeling empty and powerless. I will read it first. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I might live a life pleasing to you. I want my life to bring glory to my Lord Jesus Christ. I am empty and I need to be filled. Thank you for forgiving my sin through the death of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to indwell me. Please empower me so that I can be salt and light in my world. I pray this in faith, believing that you will answer my prayers as you have promised. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Now, if you feel prompted, and this prayer is real to you right now, I will pray this again, and you can pray it along silent with me wherever you are. Just close your eyes and focus on God and pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I might live a life pleasing to you. I want my life to bring glory to my Lord Jesus Christ. I am empty and I need to be filled. Thank you for forgiving my sin through the death of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to indwell me. Please empower me so that I can be salt and light in my world. I pray this in faith, believing that you will answer my prayers as you have promised. In Jesus' powerful name, Amen. When the 
Father, we will be still because we know you are God. And even as we close this service today, we close it because it is just an opening for the door for us to go into this world and bring with us in our temple the Holy Spirit of light that brings light into this darkness. And so we pray, God, that even as we go, as you have bidden us to go, that you will empower us, that you will anoint us, and you will enable us by the power of your Holy Spirit to be your witnesses, to bring hope, to bring your light, and to bring your love into this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.